Right. Um, okay, what we're going to cover um, is what is ABA, how it works, um, and uh, how can you get um, an ABA program into your um, EHC plan. The webinars that we have put together have been very much about EHC plans um, and how to get uh, the, the, the the best out of put it this way out of your EHC plans what should be in what shouldn't be in um, and today's session which is specifically about ABA is about how you can get if you want ABA uh, how you can get this into your EHC plan I'm not today going to talk about uh, the pros and cons of ABA there are many parents uh, who um, uh, the great evidence that uh, ABA has worked extremely well for their children. Um, other parents um, do not wish to go down the ABA route. This seminar is not going to go through what the pros and cons are, um, but more about if you want ABA, how are you going to achieve that in your EHC plan? How are you going to get it in your EHC plan and get the local authority to pay for it? Um, and, and the issues that ABA throws up are very different um, to many of the other provisions that parents would seek uh, in their EHC plan. So the, the complexities and issues in ABA cases are different to other cases, which is why we've tried to put together um, a seminar uh, that, that covers that. But I am aware that some people have very strong views for ABA and some people have very strong views against. Uh, people, parents only tend to contact us if they very much want ABA uh, in their EHC plan. So they've already seen the benefits uh, for their child of ABA, or they, they believe that it would be beneficial for their child, and they want uh, ABA in the EHC plan. ABA doesn't necessarily just uh, um, apply to autism. Um, a key uh, element of uh, ABA is the reinforcement theory. And some schools, some uh, teachers do not like the reinforcement theory, but for some young people, particularly with an autism diagnose, it, diagnosis, um, it can be beneficial. The reinforcement, um, uh, one of what once uh, ABA uh, is put in place for a young person, the reinforcement can be um, any number of things. It could be um, five minutes um, on an iPad. It could be, or, or a minute on the iPad playing a game once the, the per, or it could be um, blowing, I, I, I know one case I dealt with, the reinforcer was blowing feathers in the air because that's what the young, the child wanted. Um, it could be playing with Lego. It could be squeezing a toy. It can be all, any number of things. And the key, one of the keys with ABA is finding that reinforcer. So one of the keys of ABA will be looking at that young person and uh, working out uh, what, um, uh, what, what challenges that young person has and working on specific uh, issues um, uh, it, it, repeatedly or, or over and over and recording. The thing about ABA is that it is very much evidence-based. Evidence is taken um, of every, um, uh, of the young person's progress. And for example, if um, one of the uh, aims was for the young person to um, ask for a cup of tea, for example, or to brush their hair themselves, then that would be noted down um, throughout a period of time, which likely to be weeks, months, and um, the progress that that person makes can therefore be easily monitored because it is so evidence-based. 
ABA is clearly much more um, accepted in the USA than here, but it doesn't mean that um, uh, uh, it is not accepted here. I think it's fair to say that certain local authorities um, are strongly opposed to it. Some local authorities will say, we do not have ABA in this county. Well, that's unlawful. Um, parents have the right to ask for ABA if that's what they want. And each case must be dealt with on, on the facts. You look at the evidence, is ABA likely to work for this particular child? Is there evidence that it has worked? Local authorities who have blanket approaches to uh, ABA um, are likely to come unstuck. Some uh, local authorities may not have a blanket approach, but will not will, will still fight each and every ABA a case and will try and uh, bring evidence that ABA doesn't work and it's, um, there's not enough evidence for its success. But applied behaviour analysis is an individualistic, tailor-made, evidence-based approach that relies on data to form therapeutic decisions. So the, the kind of behaviours that are tackled in an ABA programme should be behaviours that are important for the quality of life, health and happiness of the child. Uh, for a child with autism, these behaviours involve communication, social skills, emotional literacy, play skills, learning skills, comprehension skills to access wider, less restricted environments and independent self-care skills. I can think of several uh, children that I've dealt with over the year where they were nonverbal until they uh, uh, started an intensive ABA program. Uh, I can think of one child who uh, would not have their hair cut. The mother would cut the hair while he was sleeping. And with ABA, uh, he was taken every day to stand to look outside a barber's shop and eventually um, he uh, would go into the barber's shop. Eventually, he would sit um, in the seat for a minute, not have his hair cut. Um, and eventually, over a period of months, he would go into the barber's shop and he had his hair cut. And ABA is very much about making very small steps uh, and um, the reinforcers are used. and. It is also about providing evidence about the progress. Certainly, I've dealt with several cases where parents are absolutely convinced that without ABA, their child would have remained nonverbal. But again, it's not, um, it, it's not, I, I'm not here to say that ABA will, will work in every case. Um, if you're listening to this, I assume that um, you are a parent um, who has um, looked at ABA and is considering requesting ABA in the EHC plan and would want the local authority to fund the programme. So ABA therapists will use, as I've already said, the reinforcement techniques. Um, they, can be, they can be used to work on functional skills and have already accessing the dentist or having a haircut, which I've already mentioned. And ABA methods can be applied across multiple settings, home, school, and community. ABA works very well because the tutor will do um, uh, will go into the community, but will also do work at home. And quite often there is a split placement with school. Local authorities and indeed some tribunals, if the matter went to a tribunal, do seem to take the view that ABA is um, only, uh, should only be used in primary school children or used for primary school children. And that it has little, uh, it shouldn't be used for uh, children at secondary school who are older. Uh, as I've said, as I said earlier, it very much depends on the child and young person. If that child and young person is still making progress with an ABA program, and that can be evidenced, then, then in my view, uh, there can be arguments for ABA continuing, um, even when a ch child is of secondary school age. So I've already mentioned that ABA emphasizes the use of positive reinforcement for increasing socially important skills. And the skills taught are based on the outcome of the assessments uh, with emphasis on teaching functional skills and behaviors. 
the skills are broken down into small manageable trials. And although a young person might have prompts, and again, this can be an argument that schools, local authority might say that, that, that um, it does, that the child with ABA doesn't learn independence because they're constantly prompt, prompted. What tends to happen if you're teaching a young person a new skill, you might have prompts to begin with, but then you fade the prompts out so that the child is able to uh, practice that skill over a variety of settings. And there is no other program that certainly I've come across with such, um, such, a, such, a, such great data. I mean, it is so evidence-based. Everything is recorded and analyzed. So if a child is not making progress on learning a new skill, then it might be that, that, that you have to look again at that program, look again at, um, how, at what you're trying to achieve and whether you can achieve it another way. Um, if something is not working, then the program will be changed because it is so evidence-based. Now there is a vast, what, despite what local authorities will tell you, will, may tell you, there is a vast amount of research in favour of intensive ABA above other interventions or eclectic packages. But again, I do want to emphasise: I'm not here. I'm not. I'm not an ABA consultant. I am uh, someone who uh, uh, it has come across numerous um, ABA cases and seen the huge benefits of ABA. Um, don't be put off by local authorities um, or schools saying there's no evidence to, to, to suggest that ABA can be successful. So how does ABA differ from um, other general special education? Often a school or state, they embed ABA um, principles into their curriculum. But what they're really referring to is using rewards for good behaviour and completing tasks that they ignore bad behavior, reinforce good behavior, and they break down tasks into chunks and reward after completion. And they use prompts to help children to respond and fade these prompts out. But ABA is much more, and the ABA professionals, the consultants will have a master's degree and they have to practice um, for 1500 hours of field work and they do supervision, they sit in exam. They are much more the ABA consultants are much more than uh, much more qualified than the usual TA. But also, as I've said, there will be uh, this huge evidence base. Uh, or, uh, uh, there will you, everything that that ABA does, um, it is thought out, and you have um, very good um, uh, the, the data to support what is happening. So in the, the, the general special school, you might have oversight by a class teacher, you'll have a teaching assistant, but that's often shared. Um, obviously in special schools, the level of adult support uh, depends on the type of school and the level of child needs. Um, and there will be a range of techniques and methods used. But ABA tends to be what might be called an intensive one-to-one -one approach. Now there are some ABA schools um, in England and in Wales uh, that have been hugely uh, successful. Uh, and they um, have uh, ABA uh, principles throughout the school and every child has a one-to-one -one tutor. If you're interested um, in a specialist school, um, then you will need to see if there's one near your area. There aren't many of them yet, um, but uh, as I say, they, they have been hugely successful and the children have the advantage there of being in full-time at school, but having a full-time ABA programme uh, with uh, full-time one-to-one ABA tutors. So, to run an ABA programme, you have ABA tutors and you also have consultants. Um, and you will have regular what might be called workshops so that the programmes are considered, analysed um, every few weeks and adjusted. 
So every little bit of progress that a young person makes, that is, you look at the evidence, you look at the data, and then the program is adjusted. With ABA programs, you often have one to three tutors, and you might would also have a consultant. Now, I've talked about data. The data for ABA uh, really, uh, it, it, uh, ABA children who follow an ABA program, uh, the data as to their progress um, is exceptional in the sense that, when I say exceptional, the, date, the, the amount of data that is collected um, really is um, very good. So there is a V, there is a, uh, if a child, is following an ABA program, they have what's called a VB map, and this stands for Verbal Behaviour Milestones Assessment um, and Placement Program. And eventually, essentially, it tracks on a graph and it tracks how um, a, a, a child um, is uh, succeeding at certain tasks that you have set. So if the task is for the child to be able to count to 10 and it's uh, it, in, in one week it's managed that with prompts three out of 10 the next week it's managed it with prompts uh, eight out of 10 and the next week it's managed it without prompts and you as, as I say you can see the progress that is being made so you have um, the uh, uh, data collection which um, can uh, support uh, your argument for an ABA program. If um, a young person or you feel that a, a child is not making progress on an ABA program, then um, uh, the data will show this. And the program will be adjusted constantly because there's constant ongoing assessment. Children who have an ABA program usually have a diagnosis of autism and usually will have some direct speech and language therapy as well. Um, and the speech and language therapist will, will work very closely with the ABA tutors, the ABA consultants, um, so that uh, the programme um, is very detailed and, as I've said, will be evidence-based. So, what do you need if you've decided that uh, you would like um, a, an ABA programme in an EHCP, what do you need? The problem with um, uh, being successful in obtaining an ABA programme is that you need to um, actually have some evidence that it has worked with your child. So you probably need, as a minimum, three to six months of ABA being trialled, not just an assessment. Sometimes um, ABA consultants might carry out an assessment and the assessment shows that this young person is likely um, to, to make good progress on um, an intensive ABA programme. But if a local authority um, is not keen to support that, then you may need, um, or you're likely to need, some three to six months um, of the ABA programme. And what that means is that parents um, will need to fund the ABA programme for three to six months. So at the end of that six, three to six months, look at the evidence, look at the data. Does it support continuing of an ABA programme? Um, there, then you have very good evidence as to um, uh, why an ABA programme would work in your child's case. Um, and I believe there are some charities uh, that might assist parents in funding um, this trial of ABA. Um, even if you uh, trial ABA for three to six months and it is um, successful, it doesn't mean to say that a local authority will consent to, to your child having an ABA programme or will agree to an ABA programme in the HCP or um, you will be successful at tribunal. Um, it, it, it does, it does, it does vary. Um, but if you have three to six months of data of evidence that 
um, your child or young person um, has uh, made very good progress with ABA, then that is really good evidence to have. There are various options for ABA programs. You can have a full-time home-based program. And for children under the age of five, this is how uh, many families might start. You can have an ABA program in mainstream education or in special schools or in independent setting. Um, local authorities in some cases are employing consultant ABAs to provide some in-house advice. When a child, um, many parents who, or families that start with an ABA program prior to the child starting to school, so say at age two or three, uh, might when the child becomes uh, age five, uh, look for a part-time program. And that's uh, so that it's uh, the child has half uh, the school week at on a home-based ABA program and half um, in a primary school setting. Now, if you want ABA in the HCP, you must um, argue that um, ABA is in section F of the HCP. If you're in Wales, it would be in um, section part three of the statement. So these are the sort, this, the sort of wording we put out here is the wording that you would ask to be put into an EHCP, an individually managed program using a functional analysis approach to understand behaviours of concern to be delivered through an ABA program. Um, we've give, we've, I've called this person Anna, but it's, 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 it's obviously it's not a real case. So it will be important when Anna is learning new skills that programmes are developed through a careful analysis of the task being undertaken and then focus on mastering one skill in, this, in a sequence at a time. So these are the sort of wordings that you might ask a local authority to put in section F if you want ABA. Um, and if you want um, a sort of full-time weekly uh, ABA, Anna will be provided with an applied behaviour analysis ABA programme to be delivered daily for 32 and a half hours per week during term time and 16.5 hours per week for nine weeks of the school holiday. If your child um, is autistic and um, you are seeking an ABA programme um, in the HCP, um, it is likely that you will want um, some provision for that to continue during school holidays. Um, and that in some local authorities, the local authority will say, well, we will pay for the ABA during term time and social care will pay during school holidays. Frankly, it doesn't really matter which part of the local authority pay, providing um, you have some provision in school holidays. But if you have a child who is autistic, then quite often um, I would expect there to be, it does depend on the circumstances of each case, some provision during school holidays in any event. So other wording that you might ask to be included, Anna will be taught by ABA tutors who are trained and experienced in ABA using the principles of applied behavioral analysis under monthly supervision of a board certified behavior analyst. The BCBA will run monthly 11 months per year meetings known as workshops six hours for each workshop with tutors attending for a minimum of three hours. The purpose to review and monitor Anna's targets, the focus and targets of the ABA programme will be adjusted accordingly during the workshops. An appropriate member of school staff will also attend the workshop for an agreed length of time. So I spoke earlier about how um, the, uh, the programme is monitored, data is collected, and the uh, consultant who oversees the programme will analyse the data and adjust the programmes regularly. So that is why you need to have those regular workshops with um, uh, consultants and with um, uh, the tutors. Um, 
Another suggested wording for your HCP is Anna will have full time support, 32.5 hours per week, 48 weeks of the year, delivered by adults trained in ABA who can deliver ABA based programmes across settings. The one to one support assistants working with Anna will be working towards registered behaviour technician status. The BCBA uh, will oversee the programme and will also uh, require time for consultation to supervise the ABA programme and to liaise with the ABA staff and school staff. This will require at least one hour per week and there will need to be a minimum of one to two additional hours per week for case management to include time to liaise with school. The support assistants trained in ABA will also require one to two hours a week to summarise and report progress and to review data so that they can flag up any concerns with a consultant. There should also be five hours annually for assessment and preparations of a report. I'm going to pause there. That's those suggested wordings for an EHCP in Section F are quite wordy, but it is vital that if you are looking for an ABA programme, frankly, um, even if you're not looking for an ABA programme, Section F has to be quantified and specified. So I would ex what you want uh, is it to be so detailed to leave no room for doubt. Um, simply saying Anna will have an, um, uh, an ABA programme in Section F will not be enough. It needs to be detailed. You need to know exactly what the local authority are going to pay for and what they're not going to pay for. And you need to know what Anna or your child is going to receive. It's the same with speech and language therapy. Uh, you need to have um, that Anna, for example, will receive one hour per week of direct speech and language therapy from a quantified and experienced speech and language therapist who has uh, experience in working uh, with children with similar difficulties to Anna. The speech and language therapist will also require um, uh, 15 minutes per week um, to, um, uh, dis to, to, to discuss programmes for the following week uh, with the ABA tutor or um, wh whoever is working with the child. So each bit of your, uh, each section, each part, each provision in section F must be quantified and specified. And that applies very much to any ABA program. And here's some further examples. So we've got Anna will need specific plans and goals to increase her access to the mainstream classroom to be planned, reviewed and evaluated on at least a half termly basis with BCBA class teachers, SENCO, educational psychologists and parents. In order to increase time in the mainstream class, there needs to be a functional behaviour assessment carried out by the BCBA in school to identify function of aggression. After the assessment, a systematic evaluation of a function-based intervention in the classroom should occur. So this is a this can be where your young person is moving from uh, a home-based program uh, to more in the classroom. During her transition, Anna will follow an ABA program at home and at school. And as time in school increases, the home program during term time will decrease proportionally. Anna's curriculum needs to be delivered within the context of an ABA program using the principles of behaviour analysis to break down and teach key skills and replace challenging behaviour. Anna will receive structured support from trained ABA tutors to deliver social skills training on a daily basis throughout the educational setting and to deliver structured one-to-one -one activities to develop communication and interaction skills and maintain emotional well-being. Again, all of these provisions are some that you might want in Section F, and they're all quantified, specified. Daily opportunities to learn in small groups, no more than six, and individually with full-time support from support assistants trained and experienced in ABA to ensure Anna understands what is required and is able to participate fully in social activities. The support assistants will also provide structured activities on a daily basis to develop Anna's emotional literacy, including the development of her social play skills, her awareness of facial expressions and the related vocabulary. Anna needs play skills to be specifically taught to her by those trained and experienced in ABA. So what are the um, what are some of the difficulties in getting the ABA program? So. With most ABA programmes, the parents uh, control 
uh, they have a, a personal budget and they control the budget. Um, they control, sorry, they don't control the budget. They um, arrange for the tutors and the consultant. But if the local authority are meant to be providing some of the APA provision, um, they, particularly speech and language therapy, if that's not um, provided, then what can parents do? So if you have something in section F and it's not provided, then your option really is judicial review and the ombudsman or the ombudsman. Uh, but if it if a provision is in section F, the local authority have a statute, statutory duty to make that provision. And if they fail to make that statutory provision, then you can complain to the ombudsman or threat and judicial review. The threat of judicial review usually tends to work quickest. What else is problematic is tutor availability. You need an ABA tutor. And that in certain areas, in rural areas, in some parts of England and Wales can be really difficult to find. And if you've been running a program for a couple of years, some parents, the tutors might move on, move somewhere else. It can be difficult to um, uh, recruit new staff if you if you lose one so that's one of the issues with running an ABA program um, some cases of ABA the ABA tutors um, are employed by the school but generally the ABA tutors are self-employed um, and and so it can be difficult because you've got ABA tutors going daily into a school who are not employed by the school. So you have schools do not like that. They want control over everybody coming into the school and they want to employ staff. So if they're going to employ the ABA tutors, who, who is involved in the recruitment process? Sometimes um, schools um, who don't, who are anti-ABA, um, will... Um, want to be controlling the recruitment uh, process when really uh, in my view parents should very much be involved in the recruitment of ABA tutors uh, but it, it is a, it's a difficult point if the parents have a um, uh, have a personal budget and they employ the tutors then they they can they they are in control and can deal with recruitment um, but then, of course, they have the, the parents will have additional burdens of employing staff. The, the, the consultants tend to be self-employed, whatever, uh, whether whether the tutors are employed by the school or the parents. Some schools are very anti-ABA and um, they might accept a child with an ABA program part time, but then they will they may drive to remove the ABA at an annual review. So there you need your evidence of progress with the ABA programme. But the problem you're going to have is that would your young person have made the progress they've made without the ABA programme? Because that is what the school will say if they want to get rid of the ABA programme. Or um, it can be difficult to prove that, that, that the progress the child's made has been as a direct result of the ABA and nothing else. If you're looking to have a part time ABA program or you want it um, in school, then you've really got to know your head teacher. So you need to be visiting schools and saying to head teachers, um, I want uh, my young person, my child to come to school part time with an ABA program and when they're in school to have their ABA tutor. If the, the head teacher says no way, Jose, immediately, then that may not be the, the school of your choice. Um, the problem can arise, and it's arisen in several cases that I've dealt with, it, where parents um, have an ABA programme, it's part time at home and at school, the ABA tutor also goes into school, um, and the head teacher is supportive of the programme, everything's going very well, and then the head teacher changes and their new head teacher says, I don't want this ABA tutor coming into my school. Um, and difficulties arise. I've already dealt with the payment of tutors and employment issues which can arise. Um, remember that if you get ABA into your um, EHCP um, 
at each and every annual review, it, uh, the part of the review will be looking to see uh, should are any amendments to the HC to do, uh, do they do there need to be any amendments to the HCP and um, a, a school or local authority that isn't supportive of ABA may ask that the ABA is removed or um, reduced. So there's a lot of um, misinformation and misunderstanding um, about ABA. Um, and I've already, I think, mentioned them. I think one thing I should say is that if you as a parent are planning on running a full-time ABA programme, it can be quite time consuming because you are employing the tutors, you need to make sure that everything's okay there. You, you have to have them be part of the workshops with the consultant. So do uh, do take on board, I think, that it can, if you speak to other families that have run an ABA uh, programme, um, it, it can be quite time intensive, um, as well as being quite rewarding. So we're now going to move to the question and answer uh, session where you can ask anything at all about what um, we've just um, uh, been uh, talking about um, and uh, I will try and answer the questions. Thank you. So if you want to put your questions in the chat we can we can answer them from there. Um, if you just um, put them as a direct message we can then sort them out. So the first question is, can a family win ABA if it's only delivered after school and weekends? Yes, if you have evidence of the progress, um, it might be that there's an argument about whether that's paid for by the education section or social care. But um, yes, is the answer to that. You, you want evidence as to what that child or young person, the progress they've made. And if you appeal to an, a, um, a, a special needs tribunal, I would also appeal against social care um, under the national trials scheme so that um, you could say, well, actually, I want a personal budget from social care to deliver uh, the ABA evenings and weekends. So you, you can get it that way by, um, but but if you appeal um, to a uh, special needs tribunal, do appeal against social care and argue that you want social care to pay that budget at evenings and weekends. Okay, next question. What happens if a child is receiving both standard ASD support from a TA and support from an ABA tutor at home? How can you prove ABA should be the preferred method? That's a really, really difficult one. Um, you have to try and because ABA is so evidence based, the, the data that's collected um, uh, is uh, so, so there is so much of it. Um, you would have to try and show um, the progress that child or young person's making. It may be um, that um, video evidence may help um, in. In, 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 in this case, you could have some vid so don't, If you're sending in video evidence to a tribunal, try and make it about 10 minutes each one, not any longer. Um, and, and just show some clips of the young person at home with the ABA program making progress. Your problem then is you're not, most schools are not gonna let you um, into the school uh, to video in school because of uh, obvious reasons with other children, etc. So, and they won't want to give you um, the opportunity to have any damning evidence. So the only other way that you could get the evidence in would be to it possibly instruct an independent educational psychologist. And that independent educational psychologist will be asked to carry out um, an assessment um, of your child and also to assess the home that the ABA delivered at home and to assess uh, the provision in school and to write a report. Um, and um, there are some uh, educational psychologists who um, understand um, ABA and there are some who, who, who don't seem to understand it quite so much. So um, you, you, it's going to be <coughs> sorry 
yeah, it, it is difficult uh, to provide that evidence. So I think uh, you'd have to look at, I think, a particular skill that was taught. The only way to show it probably would be um, either the video evidence I've discussed or an independent report. But also it might be that if you had a particular skill you were trying to teach your child, but you only taught it at home and the child successfully learned that skill and then compare it to a skill that the um, TA was trying to teach in school and say, well, look, you know, it didn't work here. Um, you, so, so those are a couple of options. I think that, as I say, having ABA in school depends so much on, I mean, it, it is, I think it is scandalous that at the moment um, it is such a battle for parents who believe and have some evidence that ABA uh, could make a difference to their child's life, have such a difficult battle uh, quite often with local authorities. But as I've said, it really is a postcode, postcode lottery. It depends on your LA and it depends on your school. So some local authorities um, throw their hands up and say, we don't do this. And some um, are very uh, are much more amenable um, to ABA. Next question. Okay, next question is, if a family haven't accessed any ABA yet, but requested that they would like it in the draft EHC plan, would they struggle to get this into a final plan? So basically what happens if a family wants ABA, but they've not really um, got the evidence of it or have started ABA yet? I think the answer is it's unlikely because you have to have, and this, this is the major problem with ABA, you have to have some evidence because ABA, is not for, it doesn't work with every child. ABA may not be appropriate for every child for all sorts of reasons. So firstly, I think you need to try and cons try and make contact with a, an ABA consultant and see if they'll carry out an assessment. And if they carry out an assessment, at least that will give an initial indication. At the very least, you need, a cons you need an assessment to say, this child is likely to make progress um, with, uh, ABA because in the assessment they they would they would try some uh, tasks with the child or young person. If you have an assessment, that's going to help you. But what you really need is um, uh, you you really need to have um, some evidence that you've trialed a program for a time, and that's the other difficulty with ABA because many families couldn't finance an ABA program for a couple of months. But as I said, I think there are some, it might be worth approaching some charities to see if you can get charitable funding to fund it for a couple of months. Um, but if you have no, if you haven't got an assessment from an ABA consultant at the very least, then I don't, th I think you're likely to be unsuccessful because there's no evidence that an ABA program uh, would um, be of, um, uh, benefit uh, to your child or young person. Okay, next, question. next question. Can ABA provision continue up to the age of 25? Does this ever happen? Um, good question. I've certainly had cases where ABA was ongoing to uh, 20. Um, and it does, again, it's going to depend on your local authority. But I had, um, a, a, you know, a tri a, a, in a recent case, um, a, a tribunal chair making some comment, well, um, this young person who was 14, oh, a bit old for ABA, aren't they? And that was one of the initial comments. Um, so it, it, it's, again, <laughs> um, I, I've not had it up to 25. Um, but I, yeah, so so it would depend on the local authority. If you've got evidence that an ABA programme is still working and the, the young person is making progress um, and that's, you've got your evidence for that, um, then you, you may get it, would be my answer. So next question, if a family have weekly speech and language therapists with evidence of it working and now also have ABA with lots of data, how do the LA know which has worked? 
Well, the, the speech and language therapists will have worked on um, will have worked on slightly. I mean, some of the programs that an ABA tutor will work on will be similar to the speech and language therapist, because often one of the things with an ABA program is they tend to work very closely with the speech and language therapist. But if you've got <coughs> evidence that speech and language programs working and the ABA program, then um, uh, I would expect both. Because if you have an ABA program, if you it is likely that you will have a child or young person with autism. And I would expect for most children, not all, but most children with a diagnosis of autism to have regular speech and language therapy. So when I say regular, I'm, I'm saying that direct speech and language therapy from a speech and language therapist. So I would expect if um, you have evidence that both the direct speech and language therapy and uh, the um, ABA program, that you have both uh, in the EHCP. I don't think that it's not a one or other. Um, you ought to have an ABA program and speech and language therapy and probably occupational therapy as well, because children, young people with autism have significant, often, not always, but they often have significant sensory issues. And certainly if you're looking at the intensive ABA program, um, what uh, you often will see is direct speech and language therapy, direct occupational therapy, as well as the ABA program. So I don't, um, if the young person's making progress and they're receiving ABA and they're receiving speech and language therapy, then my argument would be that, well, you need both. Um, it's not a question of which one is, what both have worked and therefore both should continue and be in the EHC plan. Next question. Okay, so next question. Would ABA still be potentially helpful if started in early teens? It depends on the progress. It depends on the, the young person and where they're at, and whether um, uh, exactly what stage they're at. And it depends um, if you can show progress um, from the data that's collected from an ABA programme. So it, the answer is it might be. <laughs> Um, but it depends on the child, young person, depends on the circumstances, depends where that young person is. I have known programs, um, ABA programs be started for a teenager and make significant progress, but it's not going to, it's not going to be appropriate in each and every case. And that's the, the, I hope the theme that's come across this morning is ABA is not for every child or young person. In some cases, it can make a significant difference, but it's not, it doesn't necessarily apply in each and every case. And that's the point I think that, that local authorities need to take on board who have this knee-jerk reaction against ABA. They should look at each case individually um, on the facts of the case rather than just saying we don't, we, we don't agree to ABA. Um, in, in some cases, um, uh, it, it can make a significant difference, but it, 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 in some cases it doesn't. You know, there have been cases that I've looked at um, uh, and um, uh, unfortunately, ABA may not be the answer. Um, so it, it depends on each case. So we don't have any further questions. I'll give it a couple of moments to allow anyone to put anything in the chat um, as a direct message um, and see if there's any other questions that we have or anything else people would like to ask. Well, thank you to everybody who's joined us um, uh, this morning. I hope that you found uh, this morning useful. Uh, this week is our SEN week where we're um, uh, having a number of uh, webinars, presentations for parents of children with special educational needs. Um, the webinars will go on our um, uh, Facebook page or, or on YouTube and be linked to our Facebook page next week. Um, and there are other um, webinars and presentations there now that you can look at. Um, yeah, if there's nothing on Netflix, you can always look at our YouTube page. Um, but we will continue to put further um, webinars up. Um, some of you, I don't know who, who, who listening, may have come to our actual, uh, before the pandemic, we had live events, but obviously we can't have live events now. So we put together this, um, uh, week um, of um, informa the, the information week, and we're trying to do small topics 
so that parents can dip in and out on a topic that might interest them. Tomorrow is annual reviews. Anybody with an EHCP, please um, either do come along and uh, partake or um, do watch the webinar later on. Um, uh, because I think that anybody, anybody, any parent with a child uh, with an EHCP um, should find the annual reviews um, uh, webinar useful. And uh, we as a firm actually have a case pending at the Court of Appeal on annual reviews, which we're hoping will make a big difference uh, to all children within AHCP. Um, as um, parents will know, uh, if your child is transitioning to um, secondary school, September 21, you should have your new A EHCP by the 15th of February. So we may be putting on a special webinar for um, parents whose children are transitioning to uh, secondary school um, just after the 15th of February so that we can deal with the issues. If you don't have your amended EHCP by the 15th of February, then you need to be writing a strongly worded letter to your local authority and threatening judicial review because frankly if you don't have it by then and you don't agree with what the local authority are proposing um, you may struggle to get your appeal in in time by September 21 and your child could be without education um, uh, if you don't agree with the HCP and, and you appeal. If you're a 16 plus if your child or young person is 16 plus and transitioning to alternative education, the date for the amended AHCP is the 31st of March. Those parents have even less time uh, to um, lodge an appeal to the SEN tribunal and get the hearing before September the 1st. Again, um, we still know of cases where um, uh, local authorities didn't issue the amended EHCP for a 16 plus child or young person who was transitioning in 20, September 2020. Um, they didn't issue it till July or August. The appeal was lodged and the appeals have still not been dealt with. Um, so that young person has been without education from September 20 to now. And we're in February. So uh, keep your eye on those dates. Keep your eye on the, 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 if it's not this year and next year, just make sure that your local authority is complying with its statutory um, duties and um, uh, they do issue the amended EHCP in time so that you can appeal if necessary. Okay, then we have no more questions. So I'm hoping, I do hope um, that you found that useful. Um, even if it's only one little nugget you take away that you find useful, um, um, hopefully that was time well spent. And um, if you wish to um, look at any of our other um, uh, webinars, please do so. Um, and I'll say goodbye. Thank you very much for joining us.